Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing a video on this pistol. A ton of you guys have asked me about it because it's been on social media a good bit. But this is my first AR9 that I sort of pieced together. I do have a factory CMMG AR9, um, but this is the one that we put together. Uh, basically it all started when Brown Owls reached out and was like, hey, do you want to do something on AR9s? They're becoming popular. We had these FM products uppers in stock. I was like, sure. Uh, so that's how we got the upper that we have here. It's the 8.5 inch FM products, nine millimeter upper. And then I reached out to the folks over at Cross Machine and Tool and uh, requested this lower here. It's beautiful, billet lower. And uh, we'll get into all those details here in just a second. And then we added some stuff, uh, Magpul grip from Brown Owls, SB83 uh, from SB Tactical. And then the lower parts kit, I believe is BCM that we had on hand. But what we're gonna do here before we go through all the details is uh, step outside of the range and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this little setup here. Time for the accuracy test. We got a few loads up on deck. We have first off some 125 grain uh, Minuteman munitions. This is their blue coat stuff, so it does not have a copper jacket. Apologize for the wind if it's loud, but it is windy as heck out here. Uh, target is downrange at 50 yards. Have a one to eight primary arms platinum scope on there, sitting in a Geissele mount. So that's that definitely costs more than the rest of the gun. But anyway, uh, just a standard bill spec trigger in there. I believe that's a DCM trigger, it's our PNT. So it's got a nickel boron coating, but it's still gonna pull like a bill spec. All right, let's get to it. All right, that was the Minute Man again. Big thanks to Minuteman, they are an ammo sponsor here. I appreciate that. Next up, we're gonna run some 135 grain uh, critical duty flex lock Hornady stuff. We got five rounds of that loaded up. Let's see how it does. Pretty safe to say it likes that load, that's for sure. And lastly, we have some 147 grain uh, Spear Gold Dot G2 ammo. And uh, this is subsonic, of course, so for those of you guys interested in running subs, pay attention. That is insane. That's well, let's go check it out. All right, so the first group, of course, was the Minuteman stuff. Definitely the biggest group. We are right at right at three inches with that one. Then we came over here to the Hornady, and that one definitely tightened up. I thought that was going to be the best group. We're center to center. We're right at an inch on that one, so two MOA with that ammo. Then we shot this one. Uh, at first, I thought, like, I totally missed the target, which wouldn't make sense on a rest, but then once I started to see the third, fourth, and fifth, uh, shot all go right about the same place. I realized we're right on. So that is about half an inch there, center to center. That is a MOA uh, grouping out of a pistol caliber. I don't think I've ever seen that actually. Um, so that's definitely the most accurate pistol caliber upper carbine, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever shot. As you guys saw, this little setup here shoots extremely well uh, across the board. So we're gonna get into the upper first here and then sort of break down the lower as well. We're gonna drop our magazine uh, with our magazine release here on the CMT lower. Other than that, it's pretty similar to your standard AR-15. You're just gonna pull these pins out here, set that off to the side. And uh, for those that didn't notice it already, this is a side ch charging uh, upper receiver. So basically this little handle right here uh, replaces your charging handle that would typically be back here at the rear. Um, we do have half by 36 threads out there. So that's the uh, Colt pattern. Um, unfortunately, one thing I didn't realize from looking at the website, looking at photos of this upper online, is that the actual uh, shoulder there of the barrel sits back just under these hand guards here. So you can't run a can on it unless you have a really small can. If you do, then it probably would work. I actually have a really small Surefire Rider can. However, I don't have the half by 36 adapter for it. Um, if FM Products is watching this, I would definitely prefer to see it in half by 28, and I don't think I'm alone. I know why they don't do it though, because a lot of people will put 22 caliber suppressors on nine millimeter stuff, and 
and blow their suppressor out. So I get it. Um, but I think as you know, the suppressors become more and more common, particularly nine millimeter pistol ones, uh, I think that's just sort of a natural step in the, in the right direction, in my opinion. So the barrel itself is made out of 4150 CMB steel. It has a melanite finish. It's one in 10 twist. And uh, the handguards here, these ones, again, they're gonna say that they're eight inches uh, with the eight and a half inch barrel, but just know that there is a little bit of recess there. M-lock at the three, six, and nine o'clock positions, and it all bolts up back here uh, via a very similar system to what Noveski used uh, years and years ago. So it's solid, it's a proven system, and uh, nothing really to complain about there handguard wise. Again, to take it apart, we're gonna pull back here on our charging handle. You guys will see our bolt comes right out. This bolt here is marked uh, FM9 Colt. However, the Colt bolts uh, that work with Colt magazines will also work with Glock mag blowers. So just know that. However, I don't think it's true if you get a Glock bolt, I don't think it'll work with Colts. Um, so just know that going into it. Uh, the bolt carrier here, again, not a whole lot going on because this is a dead blowback system. So where the gas key would normally be on an AR-15, we just have this piece of steel here, adding a little bit of weight to it. Firing pin is retained by our firing pin retaining pin. As you would imagine, again, just like an AR-15, it uh, comes out though to clean it. And we do have this weight here in the back. It's cut for um, AR-9 triggers, as well as your standard mil spec trigger. Again, we're using a BCM trigger, the PNT gunfighter trigger in the lower and have had zero issues at all. Uh, with that, I know some folks out there have tried to run uh, some fancy upgraded triggers and AR9s and haven't been able to. So if you guys are looking for that, I would just reach out to the folks at FM Products and uh, see if whatever you're thinking of will work with the bolt carrier there. So there is that. If you want to remove the weight, you're just going to drive a roll pin out and the weight will come out. However, I don't really see the point in doing that. You guys can see here this little piece that closes up. Uh, so that way you don't have a bunch of gas or carbon or anything shooting out with the blowback system where your charging handle normally would be. We do not have a forward assist. We do have a shell deflector that bolts on there. And uh, if you look down into the barrel there, you'll note that it has um, what most folks are doing for nine millimeter air barrels, sort of a feed ramp all the way around an angled uh, feeding angle. And we've had no issues at all in terms of feeding. Um, so that certainly is a good thing. I'm sure if I don't address it in the video, people will ask why the heck would you ever want an AR-9 in the first place? If you have something that is the size of an AR-15 pistol, let's say, why would you sacrifice lethality with 9mm? Well, a few reasons. Um, cost for folks who reload, generally speaking, 9mm is cheaper to reload sometimes when you're actually purchasing factory stuff. The difference isn't that great. Again, if you're going to kind of go with steel case stuff, generally speaking, it can be close to 9mm in 223. Um, however, you're going to get a whole lot of blast, a whole lot of noise, generally speaking, a little bit more received recoil in 223 to nine millimeter. Um, but these guns are fun to shoot for sure. Uh, if they're reliable, they can also be a useful tool. I mean, this little package right here can fit in a lot of backpacks as it is. It's very easy to travel with. You don't need um, to notify the ATF if you're traveling across state lines like you would with an SBR. So it's a fun little package. However, I agree for lethality, rifle calibers are the way to go, but um, I'm not a fan of limiting myself either. I like both, not either or. Moving on to the lower receiver. Again, it's the CMT billet lower. This one here is made out of 7075 T6 aluminum. It has a type three hard anodizing on there. One thing I'm sure folks always wanna know is does it have a last round bolt hold open? This particular one does not. Um, however, from what I read online, even a lot of the ones that apparently say that they do don't always function that well. So just kind of keep that in mind, I suppose. Uh, we do have a generous mag well there, which I do like. Again, there's no reason not to have that on an AR style gun. We do have our magazine release here, again, designed to work with Glock magazines. One thing that's nice is that there's no roll pins required uh, when you're actually assembling this. It does have a threaded bolt release area here. And um, for those of you guys that have watched the channel for a while, I've talked about in the past how this uh, bolt catch is kind of hard. Uh, it's a hard use item or hardware item, I should say, on AR-9s. They tend to break um, relatively easily on AR-9s as well as AR-10s. This, again, is a Bravo Company one. We've had no issues at all with it. Um, continuing on back, you'll note that we do have the little tensioning screw, the green tensioning screw there. So that way, if your upper receiver is a little bit loose in terms of fit, you can just tighten that down. And that nylon tip will mate up with your upper receiver and keep everything nice and snug. We have our integrated trigger guard. And right in front of that, you'll see that there is some lightened areas with material taken out of there just 
just to save weight. Same thing back here on the rear, near, near where it meets up with the buffer tube. A little bit of relief cuts on the sides. And one thing that's cool, is, and you might not notice it at first, is back here, right where the buffer tube starts, um, it's beefed up. And the reason for that, of course, is that you have a gigantic blowback bolt uh, and carrier coming back all the time, hammering it. So there's a little bit more mass coming back uh, when it fires than there is with a standard um, you know, AR-15. So they beefed it up for that. I think it's a smart idea. The actual weight, or rather buffer that we went with, is the CMT Tactical. It's a 7.7 .7 ounce buffer. It's <laughs> it's a standard spring, uh, so standard carbine spring. You can see there it's larger. I know some people um, have had issues using different nine millimeter bolts, not going all the way back and or going too far back and not allowing it to cycle. Um, so this is what I use. I've had no issues with it at all. Uh, FM products uh, recommends a different bolt with their upper. I believe it's a nine ounce. Don't quote me on that. I'll roll it in here if I'm wrong. Um, but again, no issues at all using this one here. We have the Magpul K2 grip. Again, that was sent out by Brown Owls and an SB Tactical SBA3 adjustable brace. It has five positions. However, it uses a mil spec uh, receiver extension. So there's actually six positions on there. Just with the brace, you can only actually use five. Um, I think it's, it's a revolutionary product for the industry. I've said it before. I said it right when it first came out. Um, a lot of people who can't have SBRs or don't want SBRs, depending on where you live, is simply a fantastic product. Um, and right now the ATF, of course, says that if you uh, occasionally fire it from your shoulder, you're fine and good to go. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. Most states allow it at this point. I'm sure there's a few of you guys, though, that are behind enemy lines and cannot get one. Feel sorry for you. It's a great product. Uh, we have an ambidextrous QD sling swivel mount there. And of course, you could rig up a sling if you want to use any number of slings to go through here or really anywhere else. So that is the little receiver. Definitely a good quality piece of kit. We've already covered accuracy, so let's talk about reliability and cost. So reliability on this one has been 100% with one exception. Um, we've used uh, factory Glock mags, ETS mags, and Magpul P mags extensively throughout this review. Right now, this uh, little pistol here has about 900 rounds on it. So not a ton, but enough to give us some data, I think, at least useful data. Um, so we had one malfunction. It was with some Minuteman uh, munitions in the ETS magazines. Now, um, and anytime you're using an aftermarket mag, just keep in mind that, you know, while it may work in a Glock per se, something that takes Glock mags, not always the case. If you're using something that takes Glock mags and you want like absolute reliability, definitely recommend using factory Glock mags. Um, so there is that. Uh, cost wise, this thing, as you see it right now, um, it's probably right around, again, depending on the sales and when you pick stuff up, is going to be right around the $600 to $700 range. Uh, the upper receiver, as you guys see it here, is going to be, I think, $375 over at Brown Mills. That's the list price. However, again, if you guys follow me on Facebook, you'll know they have sales all the time. You can get it for less than that if you aren't following me over there. Follow me over there. I recommend it. Um, the actual lower here, generally speaking, is going to be around $150 to $160. And then the SB Tactile Brace, of course, $110-ish. If you can follow me on Facebook with the deals, lower parts kit, add in, you know, another 100 maybe. Actually, probably less for that. So it's not super expensive. And then, of course, we've been running mostly the ACSS Cyclops 1X scope on there and uh, different lights. This is the Viridian X5L light. Pretty cool little light. Um, it has some interesting features. It's rechargeable for one, and it has a latent laser built in if you guys dig that. So um, that's the way we have it set up right now. And sort of what do I think of it overall? Sort of some impressions of it. Uh, again, we already talked about the recessed handguard. I'm just going to keep beating a dead horse. For the side charging uh, handle here, one thing I'll tell you is when I first got it in, it was super rough and super stiff. So what I did is just went right down the channel right here. You guys can probably see it rides in that little channel in the handguard. And put CLP in there, also removed the bolt and put CLP back on the portion that rides inside the receiver. Ran it about a hundred times and it's completely smooth now. There's no issues with it at all. I apologize if there's a dog barking in the background, but as Paul, Paul Harrell says, please bear with it. We are in a neighborhood and they have dogs. Um, so the handle here, as you guys can see, folds forward if you guys want to do that. That said, most times I would just leave it out because it's not really in the way of anything as it sits right now. Again, you could push it forward though if you want to, but not really an issue for me. Plus, if you have it out, it's easier to clear malfunctions should you have one. Uh, shooting impressions, it shoots very soft. However, it is a blowback gun. So compared to something like, for instance, the CMMG Guard, it's gonna have a little bit more recoil and pulse. That said, it's still almost nothing. Um, and it is a great gun for new shooters, for people who are recoil shy, who are 
a little bit nervous around muzzle blast, things like that, it's definitely a good option. I should also point out while I'm thinking of muzzle blast, it comes with one of those um, blast cans that projects the sound and gas forward when you fire it. I'm not a huge fan of those. It's not that they're bad per se. However, you get um, a little bit more uh, gas going back in the system. You also get no sort of, or very poor, I should say, flash reduction, and I'm a fan of flash reduction just in general, unless you have some sort of recoil monster like a Barrett M107A1. Um, so I put this little guy on here. It's a, um, I believe that's CMMG, again, half by 36 thread, A1 flash hider, and it's done great. I've had no issues with it at all. So definitely happy with that in terms of in terms of that choice there. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's been a good little gun. It's been fun. Um, FM products, actually after I got the build together, apparently they saw it on social media and they actually sent me their lower receiver as well to try out. So uh, after this video, we're gonna put the CM, uh, CMT one aside and I'm actually gonna get a different upper, probably a fax and I don't think they know that yet. But um, yeah, we're gonna run the FM products stuff together and uh, the actual cross machine and tool one separately uh, and kind of see how they stack up there. So that's that. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about the build, anything like that, by all means, definitely let me know. Uh, you can post those questions down below in the comments section. You can also post them uh, over at my Facebook page that we mentioned earlier. Um, great place to reach me there. Uh, if, I, if you guys are asking questions in the comment section, I may not see them just because of the way YouTube works. Uh, so if you need me and you need an answer, Facebook is the place to do that. Um, um, if you guys aren't subscribed and you like this type of video, you like the scenery, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, I truly appreciate the support of all of you guys out there who are watching, subscribed, sharing these videos, hitting the like button, all of those sorts of things. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.